My name is Robin Kuzmin. I'm a speaker liaison of C++ Now and CppCon conferences. And here in this uh, presentation, I would like to tell a bit how one can participate in, in, this, in C++ and C++ CppCon conferences uh, with the least expenses, how to participate in the conferences in the cheapest ways. Oops, we don't see. Uh, this is information about myself, link to the slides. Sorry, oh, full screen, so yes. Uh, Here is the contents that you can see in the abstract of my talk. My talk is most, um, I would like to say that um, since I have lots of, lots of things to say about, which is hard to memorize all of it, uh, I will be reading my, my talk instead of talking. So uh, since I will be reading, I might not notice the raised hand so if you raise your hands and I don't notice that, feel free to stop me and say there's a question. Uh, my talk is mostly addressed not to those who already attend C++ Now and CppCon, but to those who have not yet joined these conferences. I'm targeting mostly those who will be watching the video of this talk. For many of those people, the main barrier blocking their coming to the conferences is the money, the expenses for the conference. That is, I'm target, targeting mo uh, not those who participation, whose participation is fully sponsored by the employer, but mostly those who pay for themselves, at least partially, or for those for whose employer it is not easy to sponsor the, the participation. There are the following main articles of the expenses for the conferences. The conference registration, which is comparable to $1,000. Hotel lodging, comparable to $1,000, $2,000. Travel from overseas, it's about $1,000. Time away from work, potentially subtracted from the vacation, especially for contractors. Optional pre-conference and post-conference classes, committee meeting and other expenses during the conference, which is also comparable to $1,000 to $2,000. For some people, it is also the US visa. Some people have to travel to the other countries to, the, to get the visa. As you see, the participation in the conference is a, is a question of a few thousand dollars. For the significant part of the potential attendees from outside of the US, the participation in C++ Now or CppCon is comparable to a salary of a few months. I grew up in an, in an environment uh, where the lack of money was the main blocking issue for a number of things. That is why, guided by some sort of a hungry childhood, childhood syndrome, I often try to figure out the cheapest possible ways to get things done. So the main idea of this talk can be expressed with the following words. The cheapest ways to participate in C++ Now and CppCon. Now a little bit about what, what these conferences are, brief history, purpose, and difference. The C++ Now conference was first held in 2007 under the name of BoostCon. It has been organized by the Boost, com Boost Library community. The original mission of the conference was to facilitate engagement with, with and between members of the online Boost Library community. Since its creation, it has been taking place at the Aspen Center for Physics in Aspen, Colorado. The place was chosen because Dave Abrahams, the conference founder and first conference chair, has spent several summers at the Aspen Center for Physics as a boy because his father was a phys physicist that was invited to the Aspen Center for Physics several times. Dave remembered the venue as a perfect place to hold a small conference that he was envisioning for BoostCon. Because the name BoostCon was not fully reflecting the scope of the conference contents, starting with the 2012 conference, the name was changed to C++ Now. Now the mission of the conference is to serve the needs of cutting edge library developers. The conference is an annual gathering of no more than 140 C++ enthusiasts, enthusiasts and professionals from all over the world. CppCon. The mission of the Standard C++ Foundation is to support the C++ software developer community and promote the understanding and use of modern C++ standard on all the compilers and platforms. 
One tool for achieving that purpose is to produce a large mainstream C++ conference, which it has done in September of every year since 2014. So PPCon's goal is to encourage the best use of the C++ while preserving the diversity of viewpoints and experiences, but other than that, it is nonpartisan and has no agenda. It is targeted at mainstream C++ developers of all the levels. In 2018, it had over 1,200 attendees and anticipates about 1,500 this year. Up until 2018, CppCon was taking place in Bellevue, Washington. Starting with 2019, it will be held in Aurora, Colorado. The main difference between, this, between the CppCon and C++ now is this, that CppCon is mainstream conference. The attendee of any level will find the content applicable to him or her. Whereas C++ now is a conference more targeted at library experts. More cutting edge contents is discussed at C++ now. Any questions so far? Okay. How to visit CppCon and get money for that? The most profitable way to participate in CppCon is to give a class, also known as training, master class, pre-conference or post-conference class. At CppCon, there are a number of single and two-day classes before and after the conference. According to CppCon policy, most of the, of the registration fees, after reduce, reducing the cost of space, equipment, and catering, go to the instructors. So a popular class can work out very well for the instructor. But that's not all. In addition to the class honorarium, the instructors get the following. Conference re registration, full cost, at no cost. Optional hotel accommodations for up to three nights if the instructor does not give a talk or for up to nine nights if the instructor also a main program speaker. Optional coach class travel, invitation to the meet the speaker's banquet. To summarize, the class instructor can have zero expenses, can travel for free, stay for free, visit the conference for free, give a class, optionally give a talk, and get money for that. This is only applicable to CppCon. C++ now has no classes. How to visit C++ Now and CppCon for free or partially for free? The second profitable way to participate in the conference is to be an invited speaker, plenary or keynote. The conference covers the travel and lodging expenses and also provides the conference registration at no cost. This is applicable both to C++ Now and CppCon. For CppCon, the same is also applicable for main program speakers if the speaker requests financial assistance. In other words, for C++ Now, the invited keynote speakers can participate for free. For CppCon, both invited, plenary, and main program speakers can partic participate for free. This is not applicable for lightning talks and open content speakers. Now, how to avoid the expenses for the conference ticket, hotel, flight, and classes. The next profitable way to participate is volunteering. I started volunteering in 2016. My main purpose of volunteering was to avoid some of the expenses. And then I found out that volunteering gives much more than just the opportunity to save the money. The volunteers get the conference registration for free, both at C++ Now and CppCon. At CppCon, they also get a huge discount for the pre-conference and post-conference classes. When the instructors with the instructor's consent, volunteers can, get, can attend classes, for a fee that is designed to cover just the catering cost. Recently, I have chosen, uh, I, ha I have been informed that the class discount is also applicable to the student program participants. John, do you confirm that? Okay. Uh, volunteers can get the travel and lodging reimbursed by the conference. This is called volunteer grant. Anyone can apply, but both for C++ Now and CppCon, the volunteer grants are limited and very competitive. Not anyone who applies gets the grant. For the C++ Now, the grants were used at least since I joined the conference in 2017 and very likely since 2013. For CppCon, the year of 2018 was the first year when the volunteer grants were awarded. The 2019 is going to be the second year and for CppCon, the volunteer grants are expected to be a temporary measure for the relocation period. 
In addition to the financial benefits, volunteering gives some other perks. For example, when during cert doing certain volunteering activities, one can get an access to the emails of any participant, including speakers, and discuss some topics, books, talks directly. In some other volunteering positions, one can contribute to the selection of other volunteers, to the website content, registration process, field trip selection, and participate in the field trip for free. In such roles as a speaker liaison, one can get their first name, last name, and picture visibility in front of a number of speakers, some of who can potentially be the future hiring managers. The call for volunteers for CPPCon 2019 is open. The web address is on the slide, on the bottom of the slide. Reducing the conference registration cost at CPPCon. If you are a full-time full student, your registration is very low, about $150. If you are an academic or researcher at a nonprofit or government research lab, you can save significant part of your registration. Early bird registration also saves some, some money. Go to the web link and you will find out the details. Minimizing the hotel expenses. This is not something that we promote because the conference depend on that, especially C++ now. The conferences have to sell a certain number of hotel stays in order to be able to use the conference halls. This is part of the deal that we get from the venues. So if you or your employer can afford paying for the hotel, then please do. And please consider the conference official hotels first. However, if the hotel cost can become a blocking issue for you, then here are the following options. Room sharing. Many hotel rooms provide plenty of space for more than one person to stay. You can share the room and share the price. For that, go to the shown URLs or write to the shown emails. At C++ Now in Aspen Meadows Resort, the rooms are huge and it is, it is easier to share a room there than it would be at most hotels. The next item is mostly applicable to those who live in the cities of the C++ conferences. You can avoid the hotel expenses if you stay not in a hotel, but at home of another attendee who lives in the same city where the conference takes place. For example, in Russia, the C++ Russia conference venue alternates each time between St. Petersburg and Moscow. Attendees from Moscow can stay at St. Petersburg attendees' homes, and next time vice versa. It is applicable to a number of cities around the globe and to a number of technical conferences. I have personal experience of providing a place to stay. While CPPCon was taking place in Bellevue, Washington, USA, the city where I live, I provided a place to stay in 2017 to the CPPCon registrar Yuval Hager, who was coming from Canada, and in 2018 to another volunteer from Belarus, Alexander Zaitsev. I realized that those people will hardly be able to provide me a place to stay during a conference because C++ conference either do not, either doesn't take place in the, their cities or I might not be able to come to those conferences. But if I provide a, provide a place to stay for them, they provide a place to stay to someone else, those to another someone else, finally in the chain it can get back to me or to my kids some, sometime in the future. If we all do that, we'll lower down the financial barriers and be able to attend more conferences. We will all win. For some people, this phenomenon is outside, outside the, of their understanding or trust. I remember in 2017, the CPPCon registrar who stayed at my place told me about the following conversation with his daughter. Dad, do you know the guy who are you going to? You are going to. No. Then how can you stay in the house of someone you don't know? My wife was also asking, do you know the guy who is coming? <laughs> Have you ever seen him before? I agree. There is some risk, risk of unknown person in the house. But there are, there are also maybe people who you already know from the previous conferences. So the person you let in may be not that unknown. And on the other hand, we are all C++ programmers. And who are the C++ pro programmers? Those are the people, the vast majority of who has higher education, and as a result, some level of ethics, culture, personal code of conduct, etc. The risk is not as high as in society in general. 
Summary, uh, if you or your employer can afford the conference official hotel, then please do. Otherwise, please share the conference official hotel room. Otherwise, you can stay at someone else's place or stay in some other hotel. Any option is better than not coming at all. Now a little bit about how to lower down the expenses for the travel. I come to Aspen, the city of C++ now, from Seattle. The flight all the way to Aspen costs about $500 to $600, and most of the flights have a transfer in Denver or other city. But if I fly to Denver, to Denver, then the flight costs me about $200 to $250 if purchased 10 to 14 days before the C++ now. I suspect that from most of the departure points, the flight to Denver is two, three hundred dollars cheaper than the flight to Aspen. After arriving to Denver, it takes another four hours or more to get to Aspen by the ground transportation. From, from Denver to Aspen, one can uh, either share a ride with the other attendees or use the public transportation options shown at transportation page of our website, ride sharing section. Typically, we do mass mailing weeks before the conference, and people add their rights to the ride-sharing spreadsheet. Thus, those who need a ride and those who can give a ride find each other. In this way, I was given a ride, round-trip ride, in 2017 and 2018. During the rides, I got personally acquainted with such people as John McFarlane, Louis Dion, Charlie Bay, John Falls. During the four-hour trip, you find out the companies people work at, what technologies and what version of the C++ standard they use, what issues they have, and how they solve them. Sometimes people tell about the projects of their own or can explain the technology that you don't know. Such trips greatly broaden the horizon. As for coming to CPPCon, my advice would be to, pur to purchase the ticket 10 to 14 days before the departure, flight ticket. Earlier than that, and after than that, the flight tickets are typically more expensive. Here, I would like to tell about the special case of how one can participate in a conference at someone else's expense. In about 2016-2017, while looking at the links of cppcon.org, the community sponsors, sponsors link on the right-hand side column, I saw a link to the C++ Russia conference, which attracted my attention because I originally also from Russia. While looking at the program of the next C++ Russia conference, I saw a link to a talk given by an employee of a Russian company that develops a static analyzer. By that time, I got very fond of code reviewing and code analysis. I was extremely surprised to find out that a company in Russia develops a static analyzer. I wanted to chat with somebody of their company, and it was very curious to me to get some involvement to the static analysis. I have written an email to that company asking if someone of them was going to C++ Now or CPPCon. I also asked if they had a representative at the US C++ conferences, and if not, if they wanted to have such a representative who would be residing in the US, traveling inside of the US to the development conferences and events at a cost much lower than traveling from Russia to the US, and representing their company and product at those events. In particular, I was living in Bellevue, Washington, where the CPPCon was taking place at that time, and I pot potentially was able to represent their product at CPPCon at zero cost. No travel, no hotel, no registration expenses, because I was a speaker liaison. The company got very interested in the idea of having such a representative. They also wanted to talk to me in person, and very unexpectedly, unexpectedly, they invited me to come to C++ Russia 2018 at the expense of their company. They, <clears throat> that time I didn't use that opportunity. I've managed to get my US employer to cover my trip to C++ Russia. I met in, met in person with the inviting company's management. I found out that they had a number of barriers for sending their people to the US conferences, language barrier, budget, US visas, so we have sketched a rough plan of me representing them at CPPCon. And at CPPCon 2018, the last CPPCon, one of the exhibitors was that company and I was running the exhibitor desk for them. This year, 
They invited me to come to C++ Russia 2019 in April, and this time I used that opportunity. They covered my travel expense. The rest of the expenses, such as conference ticket, class, uh, place to stay, I took upon myself. In addition to all that, I got a personal enterprise license for their static analyzer. To summarize, if you live in a country, and especially in the city where the C++ conferences and other develop development events take place, then you can represent some company at those events and attend the events at the expense of that company. It is a win both for you and that company. You get a free or partially covered attendance, attendance and that company gets a low-cost representative in a remote location. Of course, when you represent a company at a conference, you run a booth or desk for them, some part of the conference passes by, but that is still much better than nothing. Any questions so far? Okay, let's move forward. How certain parts of the conferences work? Roles, tools, how one can participate, and what it gives. As for the tools, most conferences typically start with a call for submissions. The submissions go to the submission system provided by our sponsor, Care Consulting. From the submission system, the submissions are pushed to the Easy Chair tool for the program committee's consideration. The program committee members evaluate the submissions, and based on the votes, the best talks get selected to the main program. Interestingly, despite the fact that I am one of the admins of the Easy Chair, the tool is smart enough to not show me the evaluation results of this my talk. A small demo time. So if we look at all the, all the submissions, we'll see that there is submission number one under my name and this name, the name of the, this, this talk. If we go to the status of all the submissions, it doesn't show, the, show me the submission number one, my submission. It doesn't show me who was reviewing my talk and what was their score and what was the final score and where, where the, my talk was accepted or not. So from my point of view, the submission system is, is fair. Where's my mouse? I just know from the conference chair, John Kalb, that my talk was not included in the main program. I was ready for that because this talk is non-technical and C++ Now is not the first conference that did not include this talk into the main program. So that is why this talk takes place at this date and time, late at night after the picnic, outside of the main program. Why this talk still takes place? If it, if it, if it has not been selected, probably because the conference is interested in spreading the word about itself. The easy chair results are reviewed by the conference program committee chair, Bryce, who with a very small number of anonymous PC speakers makes the final decisions that make up the program. These decisions are recorded in the submission system. From the submission system, the best talks get pushed to the SCADCOM, the online tool for program scheduling. The speakers have a chance to send their representatives uh, their, their preferences about the desired dates and times of their talk depending on their arrival to the conference, biorhythm, possible jet lag, dependencies between the talks, etc. The speakers also give us information on which of any sessions in the program should be before or after their session. This is because some, uh, some sessions contain will naturally expand on the information presented at an earlier session. They also let us know when they think that two sessions should not be scheduled in, at the same time because there is too much audience overlap. Based on their preferences, the conference program is generated and adjusted. Before the conference can open registration, the conference registrar, currently Yuval Hager, both for C++ now and CppCon, needs to load all the conference information, such as dates and location, and all the information about each ticket offered into the registration tool, which is currently Eventbrite, eventbrite.com. 
We prefer to have all the tickets ready when we open registration because most attendees don't go back to registration page to see if there are any new offerings. This is much bigger issue for CppCon rather than it is for C++ now. The registration tool tracks the tickets for each attendee. There is likely a set of other tools used that I'm not aware of. Roles. As for the roles, this, uh, the list of most positions is at the URL shown on the slide. If you want to help running the conference, the easiest thing you can do is to join the program committee where you will be participating in the process of selecting the submissions to the conference program. This requires certain C++ expertise. The membership in the program committee will hardly immediately lower down any of your expenses for the conference, but it will simplify your subsequent getting of the volunteer grant. The next thing you can help with is to join as a volunteer. The volunteering will give you a free registration. The volunteer grant can give you the travel and lodging covered, but getting the grant is not that easy. For most people, getting the grant requires a substantial preparation. Uh, now I will briefly browse through the items that you need in order to get the grant. Those are the questions of the CPP Con 2018 volunteer grant application. You don't need to read them now. You will see them on the video. I will just briefly browse through those for the video purposes. You see rather lots of questions. Briefly speaking, in order to get the grant, you need to actively participate in the C++ community activities, write blogs, contribute to the open source projects, attend and help organize the user groups, events, conferences, give talks, make or translate C++ videos, etc. As you see from the links, there is a rather large number of, du of duties at the organizer's side. Some of them are done by the same people year to year, some of those duties proceed from one person to the other. Some more details are available from the volunteer program pages. Get involved as a volunteer, do your best, show your, yourself, and you will see a number of other paths that you can follow in your involvement with the conferences. CppCon 2019 call for volunteers is on. The link is on the slide. Another way you can participate is to give a talk. There is a number of ways you can give a talk. Regular program talk, lightning talk, open content talk. The CppCon 2019 call for submissions is on. The deadline is May the 20th, so hurry up. You can also participate in the, as the exhibitor, sponsor, poster presenter, tool time presenter, and finally, as a regular attendee. Any questions so far? Yeah, I yes. want to ask you about um, how you felt as a volunteer. Uh, you, were, you were doing work to run the conference. Did that mean you weren't able to attend sessions? Did that keep you from participating in the conference? So the question was, while I was volunteering, what was my ability to participate in the sessions? Uh, during volunteering, we, had a, we have a chance to sound our preferences and record those, which sessions we want to visit. And typically, the volunteers who want to visit particular sessions are assigned to moderate that session. For example, this volunteer is moderating my session because he wanted to visit my session. This is a, a, uh, can be achieved for most of the sessions, so in about, I would say, 90-95% of the cases, vol the volunteers visit those, the sessions they want to visit. So there is no, not a problem at all. Uh, any, any other question? Okay, let's move on. Future of C++ Now and CppCon. CppCon. Here's the attendee graph of CppCon. I will give a little bit of explanation. Bottom line is the number of days before the conference. Zero days, conference start, 50 days before, 100 days before, etc. This is the number of attendees on the conference, at the conference. 
Solid lines are the paid registrations. Dashed lines are the total number of registrations, including the volunteers, staff, uh, invited speakers, other speakers, etc. As you see in 2015, the total number of attendees were above 700. Then in 2016 uh, was about 900. Then in 17 it was above 1100. In 18 was above 1200. And 2019 is now here. This jump is the early bird registration deadline. That's when most of the registrations happen. Uh, as, you, as you can see from the graph, the conference has been growing during the last five years. The growth was stable and predictable. 2018 was the last year of the five-year contract with the Maidenbauer Center in Bellevue, Washington. After CPPCon 2017, it was clear that within the next five-year contract, the conference would would not fit in that venue anymore. The conference would outgrow the venue. That is why it has been decided to choose a different venue for the next five years after the CPPCon 2018. And the search of a new venue has, has been started. The conference, in order to run smoothly, needs a significant pool of volunteers. Starting from the very beginning in 2014, it took CPPCon a few years to get the current pool of volunteers in the greater Seattle area. That is why the lack of volunteers was expected after the relocation to the new venue in Denver, Colorado. To mitigate the lack of volunteers, it has been decided to introduce a volunteer grant, a volunteer grant system, the compensation of the lodging and travel for, for the volunteers during the first years at the new location. At CPPCon 2018, the volunteer grants have been tested with a small number of, of grants. In 2019, there will be the first production use of the volunteer grant system at CPPCon. The number of grants is expected to be the highest. During the subsequent years, as the pool of local volunteers get gathered, the number of grants is expected to lower down. Thus, the 2019 will be the best chance to get involved in CPPCon as a volunteer. And volunteering is the easiest, I mean, cheapest way to join CPPCon for those who are not ready to give a talk. The situation with C++ now is different. So C++ now exists from starting with 2007 as under the name of BoostCon and as I believe starting with 2000, 2012 the number of att uh, att attendees has been registered and shown in this graph. As I believe in 2012 and 2013, there was no distinction, distinction between paid and non-paid uh, registrations. Is that right? Yeah, this is a little hard to compare because some years they created a separate ticket for speakers and they just registered as a speaker. Some years we gave a regular registration but we gave 100% discount. So it makes the year-to-year -year comparisons okay. hard to Okay, so it's difficult to, to compare. So at least we can see that in 2012, the registration was about one, 130. Then in 13, it was slightly higher. In 2014, I believe it was the highest, about 150, I believe. And then in 2015, it was somewhat lower. Then in 2016, it, a bit higher. So, um, Can you give a microphone, please? John is speaking. Um, so th there was, when we switched from BoostCon to C++ Now, we added a third track, we changed the name, we emphasized C++ a little bit more, and that made it very popular. The last year of BoostCon was about 85 attendees and the first year of people was now it jumped up to 135 and then the next year is when it hit 150 and we we cut it off at 150 because we weren't really certain about the facility and this other things um, but the physics center hadn't anticipated this growth they didn't realize we were going to be at that number 
Um, and they, after the fact, said, we don't want you to be at 150 anymore. And so they've set a limit of 140. So that 150 number will always be the high watermark. So we sold out a couple of years after that. Um, since then, we haven't sold out, but we've gotten really close. And I actually prefer to be not sold out so that we never say no to anybody. Uh, but of course, I want to be really close because, you know, we need to we need to have the revenue to cover our expenses. So, uh, the last few years have kind of been the sweet spot for us, where we get close to selling out but don't quite. Um, yes. So that's that's where we're at. So recently, the number of attendees somewhat oscillates in this area, 130, 140. First of all, C++ Now is a relatively small conference. The number of volunteers is also small, about eight. It is relatively difficult to join C++ Now as a volunteer. The competition is very high. However, joining as a volunteer is still possible. The conference can cover the lodging or travel or part of any or both or none. That is, you get the registration only. If you choose none, then your chances of being selected are slightly higher. That's what I've chosen when I applied to C++ Now as a volunteer in 2017. John has just explained why C++ Now is not growing. First of all, it's a conscious choice. And another reason, I believe, is because Recently, more and more of the conference attendees start participating in uh, C++ standard committee meetings, and that's why they have choose or their employers have choose between C++ now or standard committee meetings, and very often they give preference to, to the committee. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Annual timeline of CppCon and C++ now. When to do what? Here's how I imagine a year. So this is the winter, December, January, and February, springtime, summer, and fall. The darkest sectors are the weeks of CPP now, C++ now in May, and the week of CppCon in September. Less, uh, le uh, less dark colors are the most busy periods of the year, then less busy periods of the, of the year, and the least busy, busy periods of the year. December is typically not busy with the conferences, but it, be, it's a, it is busy with the other stuff, like holiday season, family, etc. cetera. Uh, the preparation for CppCon starts almost right after the previous CppCon. So here, here's the CppCon, and the preparation for the next CppCon starts here. It starts with the call for classes in October, November period. Approximately by the end of December, the list of classes is known. This may seem very early. There is a reason for that. As soon as the early bird registration opens, someone in February, March, or April, the attendees start scheduling the trip to the conference, book the hotel and flight. But before booking, they need to know the date of arrival to the conference and departure. That date depends on whether they attend the pre-conference or post-conference classes. Thus, the list of classes needs to be known by the moment when the registration opens. Another reason, as was mentioned earlier, when we open the registration, we want all the tickets to be available at the same time. Because once the attendees schedule their trip, purchase the ticket, they typically don't go back to the uh, registration page and they don't look what other options become available after that. Uh, other reason, possible reason, is probably because this part of the year, if we consider the whole year, and since, since mostly the same people are involved to the, both conferences, this part of the year is somewhat least busy. That's why it's easier to do the call for classes at that period of time. 
The other main dates can be seen using the shown URL, and since the contents of that page is different at different parts of the year, I will just quickly browse through those dates here for the video recording port purposes. No need to read it, you will see it in the video if needed. For those who have something to work on for tomorrow, feel free to leave and I will proceed to the bonus topics, the topics that are scheduled to be if time allows. So this slide is about how speakers can make their talks available not only in the talks language but in the other languages also and thus to become more visible around the world. If you want, if you want the video of your talk to be seen not only in the talks language but also in the other languages especially if the talk original talk is given not in English then you then I would like to let you know that the video of your talk can be translated to the other languages in the form of the captions more and more about that is available at the C++ video access project page at cppvap.wiki.com if you caption or translate the C++ videos of your your or other people's talks then it can increase your chances of getting the volunteer grant. Once the question, uh, one of the questions in the volunteer grant application mentions the CPP video access project. In which companies one needs to work to be sent to the C++ conferences? For C++ now, here's the top domains, top email domains most represented among the attendees in the last three years. There are uh, corporate emails and personal emails. Each record shows the number of attendees with that email domain. As you see, most attendees use personal emails, and if all the personal emails are replaced with the corporate ones, then the rating of the corporate emails can change dramatically. That is why this rating of the corporate emails may be very far from the reality. But that's what we have, and that picture corresponds to my personal impression. For CPPCon, I did not show the personal emails. You see the troika of stable leaders of the rating. You see Microsoft, Google, ESRI, three years in, in sequence the same couple more stay within the next few places and the other typically change the, the rest of the rating. Important point is that this rating is applicable to Seattle area. After relocating to Denver area, the leader of the rating can change. <laughs> but I don't expect a significant change among the top five to six companies. what one needs to do to be sent by the employer to the conferences. When an employee comes to his or her manager and asks for the co company's coverage of the conference expenses, I see the following issues from the manager's perspective. The money. The company or team might not have budget for sending the employees to the conferences, or the budget can be very limited and not enough for all those who want to go to the conferences. The HR risks. Some managers are afraid that at the conferences, some recruiters can get in touch with their employees and the employees can leave the company. The behavioral issues and ethical issues. Some managers feel very uncomfortable when their direct reports outgrow them, the managers professionally, by means of, among other things, participating in the conferences. They may try to create the barriers on their employees' path to the conference. The lack of time. The deadlines and milestones can be the issue. Treating the time spent at the conferences as a business trip, that is keeping the salary, can be an issue especially for the contractors with hourly rate. The risk of wasting the money. Some managers may have experience with employees not serious enough about the conferences. The employees might not care about the conferences itself, conference itself. They just wanted to go to a trip at the company's expense. And the managers just don't want that to be the case. 
I'll try to address some of those issues. The money. The brief recommendation is to volunteer or to give a talk at the conference, thus lowering down the conference expenses. It is easier for the company to agree to cover the conference expenses when you take care of some, of, some part of those expenses. For example, when you come to your manager and say, there is such C++ conference I would like to attend, I agree to take care of the conference registration, $1,000, pre-conference and post-conference classes, $2,000. I just would like the company to cover my travel and lodging and treat the conference time as a business trip, keep my salary. It will be much easier for your company uh, or manager to agree. I would recommend to not say that you volunteer or give a talk that your part of the expenses will be nearly free for you. As for the lack of time, I will hardly be able to give a good recommendation about how you can solve the milestone or deadline issue. Maybe only at the moment when you get the job offer, you can notify the hiring manager that you plan to participate in the conferences and you need, to, you need a guarantee that the company will let you go to the conferences regardless of the milestones and deadlines. As for keeping the salary during the conferences, one of the ways is to work extra hours before the conference and then considering those extra hours as time worked during the conference. As for the other issues, risk of losing the employee, behavioral issue, risk of wasting the money, my major recommendation is read the C++ books. I personally feel that some of the C++ books give me more experience than I would get in 10 years of, of work. I read a C++ book and get a 10-year boost of my skill. Then I read another book and get another 10 years of experience. By reading books, in average, I get a, about 30 years of experience per year. That's what I feel. I typically have a C++ book with me, and whenever I have, a, have time to wait something, I read. I read in a bus while commuting. I read when I take my kid for a walk or wait for my kid from, a, from an after-school activity, during my flights, during my vacation. A good list of books can be found here at the URLs shown on the slide. Uh, the second of the URLs is the chronological list of some of the books. And if you have never read a C++ book and are okay to read just one C++ book, then I would recommend the Effective C++ 3rd Edition by Scott Myers. Reading the books, you will inevitably, inevitably demonstrate the professional growth, serious attitude to and strong interest in C++. The company will see your progress. If you share your experience with, the, with your colleagues, the company will value you and will want to keep you. In such a situation, if you ask for the company's participation in covering the expenses, the company will be less hesitant in giving you what you are asking for. Summary, read the C++ books, share your knowledge with the team, and either volunteer or give a talk at the conferences. That's what you need to, to be sent to the conferences. What the employers might want to know before sending their employees to the conferences. If you are a manager, and your direct reports ask for the company's participation in covering the conference expense, then you should know that the desire to participate in the conference can be a strong driver helping you to encourage the employee's professional growth. And the most efficient way to grow in C++ that I'm aware of is reading the C++ books. You can answer to your employee, for example, if you want to participate in this conference, then you need to read this set of one, two, or three books before the conference. The other thing that you as a manager could do to make sure that, that the company is not wasting the money for the conference, that is that the employee has a serious attitude, is to encourage the employees to take care of some part of their expenses. For example, you can say, we agree to pay for your travel and lodging, but you will need to pay for the conference by yourself. To avoid those expenses, you can volunteer at the conference or give a talk at a, or give a class. To summarize, the desire to participate in a conference is a strong motivation that can be leveraged 
for encouraging the employee's professional growth, for example, by reading books, and for lowering down the company's expenses for the conferences by encouraging the employees to take care of, of a part of those expenses. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you for coming this late, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So um, you've been involved as a volunteer. You've been involved uh, as a staff member for yes. both conferences. You're the speaker liaison. Yes. And you've done a lot of other kinds of things. Um, what, what impact has that had on your career? You, you've talked about what reading books has had, but being in the conference and being involved, has that, has that changed the way you're writing code? Has that changed the way your career has turned out? What, what impact has that had? I would say before I started reading books, my life was somewhat routine, gray. I started reading books, I realized that there is huge area of things that I don't know. And when I came to the conference first time, I saw a number of areas that I need to understand because I just didn't understand most of the things that people were talking about. So I, I became, I would say, more focused in my subsequent studies, in, in my subsequent choice of books, etc. So participating in conferences strongly broadened my, un, uh, my knowledge about what exists in the world of C++, what tools exist, uh, IDEs, libraries. I bring some of those to my teams. This helps me to to stay in somewhat leading position among my colleagues. And in addition to reading books, participating in C++, in C++ conferences became another bright part of my life. I just live throughout the year waiting for the next C++ conference. <laughs> uh, another important thing of the conferences is that you come to know, you, you, you start knowing in person particular people in C++ world. You can get in touch with them, you can discuss their books with them, you can uh, ask them the question about the tools, certain peculiarities of the compiler, etc. You have direct contacts, contacts to, to the experts of the C++ world, as opposed to when you don't participate in the conferences, you don't know that. You, you are just sort of isolated from the rest of the world. That's my impression of, of the C++ conferences. So, um, how, you, you talked a little bit about the employer, but what about your coworkers, and, and I guess like your employer as well. Are they, are they seeing you as a, 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 a source of information about C++ because you're participating at this level? Yes. Uh, at my previous jobs, at, the, at my previous job, uh, my manager was asking me to write the trip report, the most interesting and the most applicable things that I learned from about mm -hmm. for the team and for the rest of the team members. So I was doing that. And uh, after the conference, I was also during the meetings, I was telling a little bit about the conferences, about the most interesting sessions that I attended. And I referred the team members to the particular, sometimes to particular fragments of particular <laughs> videos of particular talks that explain my position or my opinion about the particular fragment that is being discussed during the code reviews. So the involvement and the uh, understanding of C++ and the interest to C++ language and its development and evolution strongly increased in my team. At, at least that's what I feel after I started participating in the conferences and telling about that in the team. Any more questions? Okay then, thank you for coming and have a good night. Thank you.